Hi folks and welcome back to LPJ Models. In this video I'm going to be building the 172nd Das Verk U9 Submarine. Ok, so let's start by taking a look inside the box. The instruction booklet comes in an A4 landscape format with 15 pages. It's simple and easy to follow and well printed. Current build steps are represented in blue, whilst previous steps are grey. This makes it quick to reference what subassembly you're building at the time. The hull comes moulded in two separate parts, left and right. These parts are about 80cm long, so it's going to be a big kit. It also features thousands of rivets and nice panel detail. Sprue B is made up of parts for the stand, the hull and other small details. These are all really nicely rendered. Sprue C contains most of the small fiddly details like the hatches, turnbuckles and masts. Sprue D features the conning tower and observation post. It also contains the spacer bars for inside. The decal sheet is nicely printed and comes with markings for four subs. Right, let's get building. The parts were removed from the sprues with my god hand single blade sprue cutters. The stand was constructed first to make handling and building the submarine easier. This was glued together with VMS fast setting styrene cement. The stand looks quite nice, but there are a few ejector pin marks on the rear surfaces. I didn't fill these as I didn't think they'd be that visible. With that out of the way, it was time to start on building the submarine proper. The front bulkhead and torpedo tube doors were glued into place. This was then followed by the spacer bars on the inside of the submarine. This was a great design move by Das Werk. They make lining up the hull easy, and they also add lots of strength. Once these were in place and dry, it was time to fit the two halves together. As you can see, this kit takes up a lot of real estate. It covers twice my usual building area, so filming this was quite a challenge. Once the hull had been press fit, glue was run into the opposite ends of the spacer bars, the top and the bottom of the hull to glue it firmly together. There was a nasty seam on the upper stern section. This was filled with my custom made black sprue goo. This is a blend of old pieces of sprue, extra thin cement and black lacquer paint. When the mixture's dry, this behaves exactly like styrene, so it's easy to sand and smooth. The next step was to glue some parts to the underside of the deck. This included these round thingy bobs, and the retractable engine smokestack. The deck was then pressed into place. VMS styrene cement was ran around the gaps to fix it in place. The fit for these access plates was slightly off, which might be something to do with the small gap at the front of the deck that I earlier filled with milliput.
Next up was the construction of the conning tower. This fit really nicely. There are also some small interior details for if you wanted to leave the top hatch open. The propeller shafts and shaft housings were glued into place. The props were left off to make it easier to paint them later. The dive planes were also left unglued for painting. These were just pressed into place for now. The masts and easily breakable items were left off until after painting, which started with an all-over layer of Mr. Surfacer 1500 thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner. Any dodgy areas, like this top bow seam, were sanded, filled and reprimed. For the next step, I painted the whole submarine in Tamiya Black thinned with MLT. I really need a black primer. So, being a submarine, grey is the order of the day. For the lower hull and deck colour, I used AK Real Colour Panzer Grau. This was built up in my usual black racing style, if not a bit looser because the subject was so large. I then added my first layer of tonal variation. I lightly sprayed a darkened version of the base coat through some Ushi splatter stencils. The lighter sections of the submarine were masked off and then sprayed with AK Real Colour Silbergrau. This was again highly thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner. Once this was dry, the masking tape was removed. Cue satisfying tape peel now. The silver grout was also painted on the conning tower. It was at this point I realised I hadn't done any splatter stenciling on the hull. This was done lightly with a darkened layer of the base coat like before. Now it's time for the decals. The surface was prepared with VMS decals set and fix. The decals were carefully moved into position and then given a layer of VMS decal softener. The depth markings were slightly problematic. They had trouble conforming to the surface details, so it needed cutting and several layers of decal softener. The whole surface was then given a layer of VMS Satin Varnish HD. 
I had to bring my Sparmax out of retirement for this one. The 0.35 nozzle made coverage quicker and easier. When this had dried, the whole model was given a layer of MIG chipping effects. This was followed by lightened versions of the base coats. As there are lots of wide open spaces on this model, I wanted to get in as much tonal variation as I could to make it look more interesting. Once that layer had dried, I used warm water and an old soft brush to chip away at the paint. This left lots of scratches, scuffs and random chipping effects. Next up, I went to town sponge chipping the entire submarine with VMS Chipper Nick CN01. This is a dark, rusty brown colour which I think suited the submarine great. Looking at the model, I realised I went a bit sponge heavy with the chipping. I used VMS Chipping Aid to remove the density on some of the chips. This works best with a slightly stiffer brush. I found it really useful to be able to fine tune the chipping after it had dried. To add some more depth to my paint finish, everything was washed with a mix of Abtiling 502 Sepia and VMS Universal Weathering Carrier. This was literally slavered over the lower hull, but when it came to the finer details, like the rivets on the conning tower, I used a more pin wash style approach. The observation deck was made from wooden planks. This was painted in AK Real Colour Dunkel Gelb, given a layer of MIG scratches effects, and then painted in Silver Grau. This was then chipped away with warm water and an old brush to give a nice worn effect. Once I was happy with the effect, this was given a unifying wash of Abtilung Sepia. The observation deck comes with two choices, railings or railings with a canvas cover. I chose the latter. This was primed and then given a careful pre-shade with Tamiya Black. This was then carefully covered with AK Real Color Soviet 7K sand. To add some more interest, I mixed in some MRP white with the 7K sand and carefully picked out some highlights. This was heavily thinned with MLT and sprayed at around 10 PSI. The railings on the inside are visible, so these were carefully masked and sprayed with AK Real Color Zilbergra. The two halves were then carefully glued together and cleaned up. I added some more shading to the canvas cover with Abtiling 502 Sepia. This was painted on dry and then blended in with VMS Universal Weathering Carrier and a soft brush. This took several passes to blend it down nicely.
I painted up the other set of railings as well to see how it would look, but I still preferred the one with the canvas cover. This was then carefully pressed into place without any glue. The emergency boys were painted with Tamiya Red mixed with clear red to add a bit more vibrance. This was sprayed straight over grey primer to ensure the paint stayed vibrant. To get the decals on the life preservers to fit, I had to chop away the R, S and E at the top of the decal. The decals were set with VMS decal set and fix. And after a coat of varnish and some detail painting, the life preservers were done. It's now time to wrap up some of the smaller details of the build. Dasverk supplies some turnbuckles for some of the rigging. These need to be drilled with a small drill bit. These were then set aside for later. The propellers were coated in GX2 gloss black and then sprayed with Alclad polished brass. It's now time to start gluing all those small items into place. Delicate items like the mast and periscopes were also added at this step. I used a mix of VMS Styrene Cement Fast and VMS Flexi 5K CA Superglue to fit these into place. It was at this point I decided to add some rust streaking and weathering to the kit. I used AK Streaking Rust and streaked these down with VMS Universal Weathering Carrier and a fine brush. I needed some thicker rigging wire for this kit, as my other stuff was too fine. I bought some Infini Model 132 Aero Rigging Wire. This will also come in handy when I get around to building some of my biplanes. This was cut slightly shorter than I needed and then glued in place with CA. The rigging wire was then stretched and glued into place. With the rigging done, all that was left to address was the flag. I used aluminium foil and wire to make the flag. This was then decaled as before. The flag was then bent into a fluttering shape and glued into place. And with that, the build was complete. Before we get to the gallery pictures, I want to give a huge thanks to my patrons. You guys are awesome and you help keep the channel running. If you're interested in becoming a patron, click the card in the corner. So, here we have the DAS work 172nd U9 Submarine. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, the dislike if you didn't, subscribe and share. I'm James from LPJ Models. Thanks for watching.